Is it uh, Dr. Lamb? Yes. Okay. So I, I saw this. Um, Mark Geary sent me the news release. Very interesting. Tell me a little bit more about the test. It just seems it's really cool. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, we really wanted to develop a test that was relatively fast, could be relatively inexpensive, and ideally could be done outside of your traditional clinical laboratory. So um, the reason we can do this is because we don't require expensive equipment and it requires relatively uh, minimum training compared to traditional laboratory tests. So is it swab? Is it blood? I, I read a little bit about it. What exactly the test itself? Yes. Yeah, so we tested in both nasal pharyngeal swabs and oral swabs in saliva or spit, as well as serum and urine. And the test works for all of those different sample types. It works the best in respiratory tract uh, uh, samples. So ones that are your typical oral nasal swab or spit. And that's just because the virus is found there in those type of samples more than other sample types. Is it the type I know in the beginning, I have friends that were tested and they put it way up their nose, way up there. Is it the same thing? You can do that or you can use spit. You can. Okay. Now, I know I believe when I was tested for like strep, I go to the doctor, I, they test me, I come back and boom, there it is. I learn. Are we getting, is that what this kind of is in a way or? Yeah. So we can get sample or results um, in under an hour. Um, under ideal conditions, we can do it in about 30 minutes. So that's, that's a pretty quick turnaround. And if we really want to um, do rapid testing and really identify the individual's not only at risk so they can be contained, but ultimately get them help as well. We need to have fast turnaround times for these type of tests. Is this happening around the country at different hospitals or research facilities, or are you one of the first to be able to turn it this, turn it this fast? Yeah, so there's lots of different researchers because this is such an important pro uh, problem that are working on not only this type of method, but also doing new interventions and therapies for patients globally. Um, the reason why we were able to move so fast is we actually started working on this technology uh, a couple years ago for Zika virus. And so when we did it for Zika virus, it originally took us a couple years to develop, but because we had that experience when coronavirus started emerging as a global concern in early January, we were able to rapidly turn around this technology and apply it to this new virus. Um, within a few months. So we really benefited from what we had learned earlier. Where would this be used? Is it just Beaumont properties, hospitals, Beaumont clinic, or how does that work? Like where does it get rolled out? Yeah, so this isn't available yet in the clinic, but we're hoping that with the right resources and motivation, we can get it there soon. Um, ideally, this test could be performed wherever the risk is. So because it doesn't require a clinic medical lab or expensive machinery, or uh, trained personnel per se, we could do this wherever the risk was. So you could do it in your nursing home, you could do it at your local pharmacy, you could do it at your employer, wherever the risk was, wherever the testing needed to be done on a naval ship or even a cruise ship, we could do that there. Wow. I don't know the science, I'm not a doctor, I could never, or I, c I couldn't handle your job, I give you all amazing credit. Um, so they, they swab me and is it like you put it in a machine or like literally, literally, is it a machine or is it a, a mixture of chemicals that show a color? I mean, no. So that's a wonderful question. So whatever your sample is, we would, um, when they do the nasal swab, they stick it into a fluid. So we would take that fluid or if it's your spit, we would take your spit, um, whatever it is, we would add it to a test tube that had the reaction mixture in it. We would put it in um, at a certain temperature, uh, around 55 degrees Celsius, which is just over 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, um, for that 30 to 60 minutes. And then you would look for a simple color change um, going from orange to yellow, or because sometimes that's difficult to appreciate such a subtle color change, you could use a UV light and look to see whether or not the the to glowed. And if you have something that glows, that means you would have a positive result. And if it didn't glow, it would be a negative result. So it's really easy to interpret. Uh, question, just because I ask, if I am tested, I come back positive and have no symptoms, that's asymptomatic, correct? I test positive, but I'm not showing symptoms. That's what asymptomatic means, correct? 
Okay. That's exactly what asymptomatic means. And, and it's really those people that we also want to identify because they're the ones that are going to be at risk of sharing that virus with their loved ones and their coworkers. And nobody wants to be in that position. Exactly. Does this help at all? And this is unrelated kind of, but it seems amazing that you're able to do this. Does this help in any way when it comes to a vaccine? Anything that's learned through this process at all? Is there anything that's because it seems you know amazing that you're able to get that results that fast. Everyone wants a vaccine so quick, but is there anything that can be learned from this process? I don't, I don't know. I know that's maybe not your expertise, but yeah. So um, I'm not a vaccine expert, and I have. Um, I'm, I'm hoping and and praying and supporting that we have vaccine development soon because that's going to be so important for allowing us to return to a normal lifestyle and not be afraid of getting sick or getting our loved ones sick. So, oh. um, yeah, I can't really comment no, on that fine. other than I'm, I'm there supporting them. Yeah. <laughs> How important is it for people to get tested to know it? it it's obviously important because then, you know, obviously it's better to know, I'm assuming. Yeah. So there's a couple of reasons that testing is really important. One, you want to know if you've been exposed, if you do have the virus, because one, if you start to get really sick, that means hopefully you could get the right medical treatment early in your, your disease, and that will have better outcomes because now we're learning all these long-term outcomes. So it's not just that you're sick for a little while. Um, if you start to recover, you can have these lifetime long health concerns. So we want to get the people that are sick treatments early. Two, we want to also identify people that um, are sick so they don't spread it to other people so they can quarantine and keep uh, their loved ones and coworkers and the larger general community safe. Um, we want we want to beat this. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Okay. I think that's all I want to ask off the record, kind of, can I be asymptomatic like forever for the next two years? I mean, can I just carry it with me and then always be worried that I'm gonna, until there's a vaccine, but like if yeah. I can, yeah. So the truth is we don't know how long people can be carriers for. I My suspicion is you wouldn't be a carrier for two years. That would require you to be repeatedly reinfected and oh, not showing it, symptoms. It doesn't live that long in, in me. I'm not, okay. Like Yeah, I, I would be hesitant to suspect.